How to use the Skyview Stargazing app on the iPad User's Guide. This video shows how to use all the features in the Skyview Stargazing app for the iPad. It includes the features described in the Quick Start Guide. You are watching a Tom's Tech Notes video. If you like this video, please wait until you are finished watching it, then click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page. A welcome video will play to describe my other videos. Note, I'm recording this on a Windows 10 PC using a PowerSoft phone manager to mirror the iPad display and CyberLink screen recorder to record this tutorial. This makes the sky display jerk when it moves. The sky view display on the iPad moves smoothly. Also, the iPad display shows more detail than the PC display. Main screen. When you start sky view, the display shows the sky as it would appear in the direction through the center of the iPad screen. Moving the iPad moves the sky area displayed. If you have not selected an object, as you move the iPad, the name and description of each object in the center circle is shown at the bottom. Pressing the I will show additional information. You may have to press it twice to show even more information. To return to the normal display, press the down arrow head at the right end of that box. Other options affecting the display are described later. The camera icon. Press this to take a snapshot of the screen display. There are options to email the photo, add it to a note in your iPad, or to save it in your iPad's photo file. Access to the photo file has to be given in the iPad settings for Skyview and we'll go ahead and look at those now and the other settings that affect Skyview. Open settings and scroll to the bottom to find Skyview. You need to give Skyview permission to access the location features of the iPad so it'll know which direction you're pointing in the sky. You need to give it access to the photos if you want to be able to take photos of the display screen and save them in the iPad photo file. The camera, if you leave it turned on, the Skyview program will be able to turn on the iPad camera. Remember though, if you take a snapshot in Skyview by clicking the camera icon, that will take a snapshot of the screen display. If you also turn on the camera, the snapshot will include both the picture from this display and the picture through the iPad camera, and that generally is fairly confusing. Notifications is a feature we'll describe later. There is a feature in Skyview that does do notifications and we'll just see what those are real, real briefly. You can have the iPad notifications be shown in the notification center. You can have a sound to indicate there's a notification or you can show it on the lock screen. And we'll see later what those notifications are for. So let's go back to the uh, Skyview program. To close a pop-up like the uh, camera icon pop-up, just touch the screen somewhere else. The target icon, if you tap the target icon, it will select whichever object is in the center circle. First of all, let's deselect this so we can tell which object is in the center circle. So we, we click the X to deselect. Okay, this star is in the center circle now. So if I click the target, that will select it. So now it's selected and there's a blue circle around it to show that it's selected. If you uh, touch the eye, it'll give you more information. And for some objects, if you touch the eye again, you'll get still more information. For stars, it shows a picture indicating the color or type of star and gives some information about the star. 
the clicking the star to the right of the picture will add the item, the star in this case, to your favorites list. And we'll see later how to access that list. I'll go ahead and add this star to my favorites list. I have some other things in that list also. When you click the star, it, it turns to a normal star image, not an outline to show that you did click it. To return the information screen to normal, you click the arrowhead that points down. I'll go ahead and cancel the selection by clicking that X. The magnifying glass icon is the search. What you can do, is you can locate objects two different ways. You can start to type the name of the object after clicking uh, at the top. Let's take the star Rigel. Continue typing the name until it appears in the list and then click it in the list. The arrow indicates the direction you need to move the iPad to center the star. Looks like it's going to be down. So let's move the iPad until the star appears. It'll have a blue circle around it because we selected it when we searched for it. There it is. It is selected, as I said, with the blue circle. When you get near it, the arrow in the center goes away. If you get further from, when the star is further from the center, the arrow reappears to show you which way to move to center it again. If you do another search, it will automatically deselect the last search and select the new search. So let's just click the search icon again, the magnifying glass. Another way to search besides typing the name is to select a category. I'll do solar system. Should point out on this list, the ones that are bright and white, the names, are the ones that are above the horizon. The ones that are dimmed are below the horizon currently. So if we select an item that's above the horizon, for instance, the moon, again it shows you the direction to move the iPad. A little in additional information about the search of the categories. If the category has a lot of items in it, such as stars, for instance, you can quickly go down the list to locate something by scrolling with your fingertip. Or you can go alphabetically down the list by skipping by clicking the letters that are on the right side of the, of the pop-up. So let's go down to the ones that for instance, start with an S. So those are the ones that start with S, so you can skip ahead in the list that way. And once again, once you click one of the items, then that item becomes selected, replaces the previous selection if there was one. There's a feature at the bottom that I'll have, I'll hit the search uh, button again to go back to the uh, main search screen, and I'll click sightings at the bottom. And what that does, if, it, if the item is up now, it, it'll say now, but if the item is not up, and I'm looking for Jupiter in this list, here's Jupiter. It comes up at 5.51 a.m., but you can click the plus, and if I had enabled notifications, it would give me a notification on the iPad when Jupiter is above the horizon. Clicking settings on the pop-up will open the iPad settings screen so you can enable the notifications and we did describe that screen earlier. There's also a shortcut if you go that way to the settings screen to come back to Skyview. You can do several things at once and it'll just notify you whenever each of those items appears above the horizon and it will no doubt tell you which item it is. Let's try leaving the sighting screen coming back and trying a notification. Okay, it worked that time. The secret is if you didn't have notifications enabled and you leave this screen to go enable them and you come back, you have to close this notification screen that we're on right now and open it again for it to work. That The flag does not get cleared properly. So now I have a notification set for Jupiter, which means at 5.51 a.m. the iPad will provide me with a notification that Jupiter has risen. Some other items to look at in the search box. These are the bottom, uh, the bottom icons here are uh, navigation icons for searching. 
This returns you to the standard search box, which is the one that's open. This shows the favorites, and this is the screen we were just on to set sightings. So let's look at the favorites list. Before uh, this session, I had set Mercury, and in this session, I set the uh, Delta Centaurus. So there they are in the, in the list. Neither one of them is up at the moment. That's why they're both dimmed. Let's go back to settings and see all the settings that are available in Skyview. The settings icon is the one below the camera icon. There are eight types of settings represented by the icons at the bottom. There's also two sliders, one at the left and one at the right. The left slider sets the brightness of the star shown on the display, the limiting, uh, the cutoff brightness. So if you turn it all the way to the right, it'll basically show all the stars in the database for Skyview. But if you turn it part way down, it will only show stars that are above a certain magnitude. So it's very handy if you're out on a night when you, you really can't see stars down to the, the dimmest ones and it, it cuts down on the confusion. For, for this demo, I'll go ahead and leave the uh, setting all the way up so it shows the dim stars also. The, the slider on the right affects the size that the planet's displayed. Now let's go find a planet. Let's change the right slider under the settings and watch what it does to the size of Mars. Maximum. Minimum. I like to leave it on the minimum. That way it doesn't blot out the stars around it. The size of the moon and sun are not affected by the setting of the size slider. Mars and Jupiter are near the sun and their size changes with the slider, but the sun's does not. So as I said, the sun, the sun size is the same all the time. Let's go through the icons and what they do. First icon lets you order uh, an addition of information on satellites to be built into Skyview so you can find more satellites. The next icon is the detail settings. They're in a lot of categories. The shop icon, second one, is the same as the one we just saw. It lets you buy a, uh, an add-on for satellites for the program. Display icon. A lot of display options. Augmented reality view and the TV camera icon do exactly the same thing. If either one of those is turned on, it turns on the camera in the iPad. Go back to display settings. You can suppress or show different things on the display. You can show constellation art for constellations that are on the display. It will show them as, as a constellation moves into the uh, display and then they'll go away when it gets too far away from the center. So it shows constellation art. Now you can do independently of the art, you can show or hide constellation lines. It's getting confusing, so let's turn off the art and just turn on the line. So it's the same thing. As a constellation comes in, it'll show lines connecting the stars of the constellation. And then when it leaves the screen, they go away. Now, satellites, this is a satellite right here. It's blue with a dark center. That's the way it shows satellites, and there's one over here. You can show or hide the satellites. So you can click this, unclick it, uncheck it to make them disappear, check it to show them. If you're going to look at satellites, you want to show them. If you're not all that interested in satellites, if you turn them off, there are a lot of satellites up there. There are satellites in pieces of rockets and things. So those are the satellites. I'll turn, I'll leave them on for now because I want to show you the next thing, which is object trajectories. Now, object trajectory shows you the path a selected object will take in the sky. So let's select one of the satellites. Now let's turn trajectories on. It shows the path that selected object that the selected object will take in the sky. Now I wanted to start with a satellite because satellites have all different trajectories depending on their orbits. If you pick a star, trajectory is a lot different because of course the star trajectories are due to the rotation of the Earth around the center and that makes the stars and the sun and everything else appear to move through the sky in a particular pattern. So here's a star, here's a star, pretty similar. Here's a satellite, not so similar. I'm going to turn trajectories off again. Another way to turn off trajectories is to click the lower right settings symbol. 
Back to the settings for the display. There's another uh, slider for visible star magnitude. But there's one here and it's easier to use. That's all of the display settings. Music and sound. Skyview has three music selections. And you can select one of them and then turn the music on and off up here. If music is turned on, the selection will play continuously as long as Skyview is running. I suggest you don't use that feature if you're stargazing in a group. Location lets you define a location and then Skyview will show the sky from that location as opposed to the location you're actually viewing from. Date and time a similar feature lets you view the sky at a given date and time from where you are currently located. You can set the date and time to a different date and time than the current date and time. And at any time when you've changed the date and time, you can set it back to the current date and time by clicking there. View calibration. View calibration lets you calibrate the iPad compass. And the iPad compass in the automatic calibration setting you calibrate the iPad compass by holding the iPad out at arm's length and moving in a, in a figure eight pattern. You would do that if you notice that the sky, the actual position of stars in the sky didn't quite match the position of the stars on the display from Skyview. And you would do the figure eight pattern several times and see if you can get the sky position to match the position of the stars on your display. If you have too much trouble doing that, you can try the manual calibration mode. In manual calibration mode, you drag this slider back and forth, and that adjusts the calibration of the compass. The compass calibration might be off because you're parked too close to a car or something electronic is near your telescope. I normally do leave it in the automatic position unless I can't correct it by doing the figure eight pattern. The What's New displays information from the program's author on new products or new features in the program that they've added. There's nothing in there now, so if you have the program you might check there from time to time. I would guess that one of their updates they would update that What's New section. Continuing with the settings icons, this is a calendar icon. It's used for changing the date and time. It's the same function that was already described in the settings. This is the calibration, manual or automatic calibration. That was also described in the settings. Day and night display. If you're stargazing at night, you probably don't want a bright white display disturbing your night vision, so you press the moon symbol. It switches the display to a dimmer red display that won't disturb your night vision. If, again, if you're in a group, I would strongly recommend you do that, otherwise you get screamed at. The movie camera turns on and off the iPad camera, same as the augmented reality button in the display options, if you've allowed Skyview to control that camera. This icon starts and stops the music that you've selected in the settings. This turns the sounds on and off, the same thing as one of the features in the settings. And this turns trajectories on and off, the same as the feature we saw in the display settings. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, please click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page to watch my other videos.